Watching Manchester United's first team right now, it's exciting certainly if you're a neutral, but it's chaotic. It's unsustainable. There's still so much growth and progress that is needed under Eric Ten Hag for us to challenge for the title. When it comes to the future of Manchester United, I'm really excited. And for good reason too. In this video, I want to explain exactly why. Click the link up there. I've already done a deep dive into the academy restructure that's happened. And what I want to do in this video is explain it in a little bit more detail. And it's not just about Garnacho or Menu or even Cam Buala, or even Amas, who made the bench against Liverpool for the first time. It's much deeper than that. And I'll explain in this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But I think you're going to enjoy this one. Give me 10 minutes of your time. When it comes to Eric Ten Hag, okay, there's a lot of problems that we've seen this season when it comes to the style, when it comes to just a ton of things. I think when it comes to the breakthroughs of Garnacho and Mainu, I'm going to start with those two. Only briefly, but he's handled them perfectly, man. Right from the very beginning with Garnacho, and you know what he had. He was late to a training in preseason, then he didn't play any games. Right now, he is our main man in attack. As a 19-year-old, and he started like, what, 27, 28 consecutive games for Manchester United? Flourishing. And I think Ten Hag's management of him has been bang on. In the same way, I would say that Ten Hag's management of Mainu has been Bang on. And we've seen the breakthrough of Maynou. Now we would have seen it earlier this season if it wasn't for his injury that he suffered against Real Madrid in the preseason. And we're also going to watch him, I think, break through on the international stage at the Euros with England. Because I don't think you're going to see a more balanced midfield three of Rice, Maynou and Bellingham. A very mature head on his shoulders, but he's only 18. You saw that goal against Liverpool. Ridiculous. But there is so much more to come from him. You know what's really exciting, by the way, about these two? Those two won the FA Youth Cup together. Really good mates. And now they're going to be breaking through into the international scene together as well. That's Mainu with Garnacho's shirt from his first full debut for Argentina. Who was that against? El Salvador, I think it was. And that's Garnacho with Mainu's. It's wicked to see. But as well as those two, this is where you go deeper. And Cambuela getting his opportunity. Yes, it happened because of injuries, but just like Rashford making his debut against Midtjylland because Martial was injured, Cambuela got his chance against Liverpool and he took it on the big stage against Liverpool in the Premier League at Old Trafford. Man of the match for me. And I thought this little interview here on MUTV was absolutely class. Just this little snippet here. But look at, look at Cambuela's face light up when he gets told about how much he enjoys defending. Football is how much you enjoy defending and you celebrate those small moments. <laughs> I just like that a little bit. But Cam Buala, in my opinion, was man of the match against Liverpool. And if it wasn't for being injured for basically two full seasons, we probably would have seen him come through sooner. And on top of that, you saw Harry Amass make the bench. Signed his first professional contract recently, just turned 17, only signed in the summer from Watford. Nailed it with the under-18s. And again, through a selection of injuries that we've had to our left-backs all season, he's got the opportunity. And then if you want to go a little bit deeper, you look at uh, that's Mantato, who's a 16-year-old who's been training with the first team. And there's plenty more like Ethan Wheatley, who, of course, scored a hat-trick at the weekend. I think Eric Ten Hag has really managed youth prospects in the right way. Now, not everyone's going to agree with that because so many of you think that he shouldn't have sold Zidane Ekbal, maybe even Charlie Savage. He got really angry with James Garner. Was that, did that happen before he came in? I can't quite know. Uh, Alvaro Fernandez is one that a lot of people are angry about. But Alvaro Fernandez might not even be signed from Benfica. Zidane Ekbal, I'm not sure how he's been getting on if I'm being completely honest. And there's some others too. Alvaro, I trust Ten Hag when it comes to youth team players. And what I say when this goes deeper than that is you can take a look at the under-18s uh, under this weekend. Not only did they beat Liverpool, they ripped them to shreds. 9-1, they were 1-0 up within like 30 seconds, a goal from Scanlon. But a hat-trick from Ethan Wheatley, two from Scanlon, two from Bianchetti, and one each from Missing and Williams. Leaves Manchester United's under-18s, 13 points clear at the top of the under-18s Premier League, four games to go. City got two games in hand. If Man United win two more games, they've won the league. And on top of that, they're in the Premier League Cup final against City on the 23rd of April. Make sure you tune into that. Adam Lawrence has done a fantastic job. And this is what I mean when, I, when I'm saying I'm excited. And it just goes deeper than just see the, the, what you're seeing. Cambuala is effectively like the tip of the iceberg. 
the the player that's sort of bro that breaking through into the first team. But when you go deeper and you go deeper, you see how many more there could be over these next few years. And Adam Lawrence has done a great job managing the under-18s. I think he got promoted from under-16s co head coach. I don't know whether I'm right or wrong with that. But I'm pretty sure he's an internal promotion and he's done very, very well. And then you look at other players, of course, and I've already done this in the deep dive, so I won't go into this again, but that's Jack and Tyler Fletcher signing their first, first professional contracts at 17. There you've got Shea Lacey and Amir Ibrahimov. And if you're looking at individually talented players, those two right there are standouts. In terms of... They just look like incredible prospects. Shea Lacey's had a long-term injury. He's just coming back into the under-18 setup. And Ibrahimov also has had some big injuries. And he's coming back in too. I think he played for the under-21s against Monaco and scored recently. But both of them called up. Well, not both of them, sorry. Ibrahimov and Mantato, who I've already mentioned there just before, called up into the under-16 squad. That made that Ibrahimov family gene. Man, they got some sporty gene there, man. <laughs> you got Amir... Um, Gazik and Mohamed all playing for Manchester United's Academy and that's their bigger brother who is an MMA prospect too and then you go over even deeper than that the under 16s winning 5-1 this weekend against Liverpool so on aggregate 14-2 the under 16s and the under 18s and of course the first team drew against Liverpool as well and this is the reason that there, that there's lots of reasons in terms of the people that we are bringing into the academy we're making better decisions. We're bringing in better prospects. And on top of that, the environment they're coming into, again, this is something that Nick Cox has done extremely well. I need to get Nick Cox on here for an interview, man. I really want to speak to him. I think it'd be a fascinating interview. As the head of Academy, I think he's done so well in these last few years. But on top of that is this, is the new setup we are going to be bringing these players into. So if Nick Cox has helped create a better Academy environment and the pathway to the first team, that's only going to be improved by what is going to happen with the footballing structure that comes in. Not as much Dan Ashworth. He'll help, but he's the man in control of the whole wheel, making sure everybody's doing their job properly. And not even Omar Barada. It's more Jason Wilcox. Jason Wilcox is going to be brought in. Well, we have to agree the package with Sir Hansen, blah, blah, blah. He's going to be brought in as a technical director. Now, he, of course, is the former academy director at City was actually the, under, the City's under 18 head coach for two years as well and oversaw loads of players coming through. He's going to help create that pathway. So not only do we have, right now, as I said, we've got a manager there who I believe works extremely well with youth team players. He showed that at Ajax and I think he showed the same thing at Manchester United, even in difficult circumstances. And then you've got a crop of youngsters who we currently have in our, in our systems, in our academy system, the under 18s beating Liverpool 9-1, right? The under 15s beating Liverpool 5 1. And on top of that, I think you've got a head of academy in Nick Cox who really is showing that he's very good at that job. And on top of that, we're about to get a technical director in who will who will help that pathway even more. All those things combined, I think, are a big reason to be excited about the future of Manchester United. And it's it's youth is what allows you to dream about what could be. It always has been. And with Garnacho coming through last year and Mainu coming through this year, and now with Cambuala, has, who has, I suppose, just broken through into the first team, really, with that performance and that announcement, and you've got Amas on the bench, and you've got all those other players I've spoken about, and the new environment, and the new footballing structure on top, the future is very, very bright at Manchester United. As frustrated as you are at the moment about how we're playing, it's going to get better. Really will. 